with the color commentary. The Franklin, a good ball game here today, 80 to 72. A couple of questionable calls as far as Cleveland State is concerned in the last couple of minutes. But uh, really the problem with Cleveland State is they, they uh, got out to a 10-point lead, saw that evaporate quickly, watched Bowling Green get out to a big lead, and then it became too little too late. Yeah, Les, that, that, that little 10, 15-minute law that Cleveland State had really cost them this ball game. They, they, they had a chance to, to, to challenge this team, and they really didn't. And it wasn't until it was too late that they tried to get back in the ball game. As, as uh, we had voted the uh, John McClendon players of the game, John Reimold with 24 points for Bowling Green for Cleveland State, and Modibo Niakati with another 23-point performance. Statistically in the game, the uh, Vikings lose it by eight. They shot 41 percent picking today that they would say that same thing. I'm not so sure either. Boston College picks second in the Big East. Ryan Sidney does it all. Keep an eye on Ryan Sidney on the board. Six foot two, averaged eight rebounds a game last year. Of all players, six two and under, Ryan Sidney led the nation. Curtis Smith goes where he wants, like a 400 pound elephant. Six foot eight, 265 pounds, averaging better than 20 points a game since he became a starter. Nate Dornicamp, a seven footer, has started every game since he became a BC Eagle. Les, how'd you like to have a freshman point guard like Louis Hinnant, who is averaging one turnover every 38 minutes? That's an absolute incredible statistic right there. And of course, uh, Troy Bell rounds out that starting lineup. Interesting to see that uh, Gerwig is getting that start and Bill when I saw him get injured against Cleveland State uh, a couple of weeks ago it looked really bad it looked like it might have been uh, uh, I don't I don't know about a season ender but one that would have kept him out a long time but he's back and it'll be interesting to see how he responds to that sh uh, shoulder injury in addition to Nate Gerwig who is one half of the center core for Kent State the other half is seven footer John Edwards up front you've got Anthony Wilkins playing at Gundarini in his hometown of Cleveland Ohio Antonio Gates a fifth year senior out of Detroit Gerwig from Pittsburgh, Shenley. Freshman DeAndre Haynes, who leads the Mid-American Conference in assists, will play the point guard against Louis Hinnant, another freshman. And Eric Hout, who has emerged less. This is a fellow who played a role as a long-distance shooter. 66, 67% of his points from behind the arc his first two years. Now, he scores from all over the field. Yeah, he's a more of a complete player right now. And uh, as we mentioned in the pregame, Bill, this team has not skipped a beat uh, from the success of of the guys who have been around for quite some time, the, the Mitchells and the uh, and the Huffmans and people like that. But uh, Kent State uh, going up against the Golden Eagles and and uh, earlier tonight in the in the first game, which Cleveland State lost to Bowling Green, 80 to 72. The assistant coach for Cleveland State, Mitch Bonagero, actually played for Boston College and back in a tournament way back when. Uh, scored some points in an NCAA tournament game for Boston College. Now, Jim Christian played for Al Skinner, yes, who's he the did. coach of Boston College. Jim Christian, a U University of Rhode Island grad class of 88 in his first year, taking over for Stan Heath. Jim Christian, previously an assistant at Pittsburgh, Miami, Western Kentucky, and St. Francis of Pennsylvania. You know what goes unnoticed in all the things we were talking about with this uh, different team for Kent State after the great success over the last three or four years? The, the, interesting, the interesting thing is that it's three different coaches over those last three years. So you've got the changes in style of coaching, changes in style of play perhaps, and yet no matter what it's been, Kent State has done what they've needed to do. Al Skinner's in his sixth year overall at BC, 85 and 75. 50th year coaching overall, nine years at Rhode Island. He's in the Hall of Fame at both. University of Massachusetts, his alma mater, and the University of Rhode Island, where he was an outstanding head coach. Referees for tonight, Terry Weimer, Jerry Sauter, and Lamar Simpson. And the tip goes to Boston College. That's Troy Bell. Guarded by DeAndre Haynes. Man-to-man -man defense for the Golden Flashes. Ryan Sidney guarded by Wilkins, Craig Smith, and Gates. That's Louis Hinnant down low. Craig Smith on the block. He scores first blood, Boston College, two zip eagles. I wonder if Gerwig was a little tentative in coming over to help out on that uh, on that side. It didn't look like he uh, went after it. Well, Nate Gerwig isn't isn't still 100%, and that's one thing to keep in mind. Kent State around the perimeter into the paint, and a jumper by Wilkins. That's three. Anthony Wilkins shooting almost 50% from three-point range, 48.7 to be exact. Anthony Wilkins, first three points of the game for the Golden Flashes. Ryan Sidney and Wilkins. That's Louis Hinnant, and that's Craig Smith. Whistle there, call a hold on the baseline. First team foul on Kent State, and the foul is on DeAndre Haynes. 
Well, Kent State going with that tight man-to-man, -man, and it's interesting to see as we play one minute into the game how the referees are going to call it. That was a pretty quick call on not much contact. Both teams very physical. Kent State, although they are not a big team, is a team that likes to bang. And Nate Dornekamp is there to bang for BC. Picked off by Antonio Gates. You'll see Gates handle the ball out front a lot, Les. Tell me how soon you start thinking of Anthony Mason of the NBA when you see Antonio Gates. Well, not as tall, but uh, physically, it's uh, it's right there with him. Ryan Sidney and Anthony Wilkins. That's Gates in the right corner. That was right pet. See what I told you? Too quick for the big guys is Antonio Gates. BC on the move. This Craig Smith, great athleticism. Gates defensive rebound. Gates gets his own, puts it back. Well, already that's better than Mason. Better ball handler and maybe a better shooter. We saw it exhibited right then. And has also been looked at by NFL franchises as a free as a free agent football player. Well, you talked about uh, Gates. What about Wilkins and uh, similarity between him and his cousin? We've seen uh, both Wilkins' cousins play a few times. Ryan Sidney's acrobatics don't go. Anthony Wilkins, who's rebounding very well. Wilkins is averaging six and a half rebounds a game on the year. That's second on the team to Gates. DeAndre Haynes is leading the Mid-American Conference in assists as a freshman. Gates is too quick for Smith. He's also a big game player. Now when you hit that shot, it, it, it makes them come out on you, which will open up all kinds of things, and he shows that shot early. Five points for Antonio Gates. Golden flashes are ahead, eight and two. Troy Bell doing the ball handling now. They would prefer that Troy Bell not handle the ball. You can see Kent State's accuracy from behind the three-point line. Kent State, one of the better three-point shooting teams in the nation. So is Troy Bell as an individual. Hustle from Wilkins. Watch how many times the Golden Flashes get down on the floor. That's one of the things that they pride themselves in. First game of the year against Urbana, all 12 of them got floor burns. What's well, interesting, I don't see too much double teaming or anything else on Bell. Not on Bell, but I tell you, Antonio Gates' footwork was able to force Craig Smith to step on the baseline, give the ball back to the Golden Flashes. I mean, here's a guy in Bell averaging over 22 points a game, and it doesn't look like at this point in the game that they're doing anything special on. And that's what I like about teams, Les, that let the game come to their big-time players. There's nothing wrong with Bell letting the game come to him. Gates in the paint. There's the quickness. Hout. Rick Hout. <laughs> Get it out to Troy Bell. That's three. That's good. First three of the game for Troy Bell. Three points. Well, maybe they had to start thinking about doing something on it. It's interesting that this is the first time these two teams have met in history. However, Kent State has a three-game winning streak against Big East teams. They haven't lost since 1994 when they lost to Syracuse. Oh, sweet pass from Antonio Gates to Gerwig. That might have been set up by the outside shot that he made earlier. Gorna Kent knocks it out of bounds. Golden flashes ball. There's a timeout on the floor. Kent State in the early going, showing an affinity for the floor and the hoops at Gundarina. Fake and inside on the easy pass to uh, Thurwood for the easy two. Well, there's points, there's assists, and there's rebounds, well, and Antonio Gates is already providing. Yeah, in four minutes, uh, that's the whole package. Well, Boston College did very well a couple of days ago against another MAC team. That would have been in football where they just destroyed Toledo. Rob St. Pierre, the quarterback of the Golden Eagles, certainly didn't make himself a dollar or two as far as the NFL is concerned with his performance. You see what Antonio Gates has done as a golden flash. He came to Kent State from the College of the Sequoia as a junior college in California, which was going to feed him to Fresno State. But Stan Heath was able to get Antonio Gates away from California into a Kent State uniform. And there are a whole lot of people in Portage County and other points that are happy about that. In the paint to Gates. Around Dornkamp and good. Well, Dornkamp at, at his size, he still can't contend at uh, seven foot with Gates because, as you say, he's just too quick. That's seven points for Antonio Gates. He's three out of four from the floor. One of them a three-pointer. Dornkamp, not much of a threat to score. Almost the curse of the play-by-play -play man. <laughs> Gates, look at the handle. That'll be a foul on Ryan Sidney. 
Gates does have more hair than Anthony Mason, that we've determined. For now. <laughs> Antonio Gates, take a look at the athletic ability and the hands. And you know what you haven't seen? You haven't seen how good a passer he can be. Liz. Well, you have that pass inside to Gerwig, certainly, but I think that was set up because of the long shot that he hit. And I think Boston College is, is feeling him out right now. Uh, feeling out, I think both teams are really feeling each other out. And the uh, Golden Flash is up by seven. John Edwards, a much improved player, has it knocked out of bounds by Craig Smith. John Edwards sporting a headband tonight, which is a, a new affectation. But with Nate Gerwig, John Edwards and Nate Gerwig close to 20 points a game out of the five spot, and that's not too bad at all. 13 block shots in the first set, almost two a game. He's a redshirt junior. By the time he's done, he'll be number one. Turnover for DeAndre Haynes. Ryan Sidney does what he does so well, which is make things happen ahead to Craig Smith. Four points for Craig Smith. Boston College breaks a Kent State run. Well, a great uh, change of pace there by Smith. His first attempt looked like it might have been blocked. He just switched over and laid it up and in. Played a year at Worcester Academy after graduating from high school at L.A. Fairfax, and he's had that extra year. It certainly doesn't hurt. Good ball movement by the Flashes. Edwards doesn't make himself big enough. Here comes Boston College. That's got to be goaltending. That certainly is. Six points for Craig Smith. Matt Jakeway getting ready to check into the ball game for Kent State. Jakeway for DeAndre Haynes. Matt Jakeway's a transfer from Austin P. And last time out against St. Bonaventure, Jakeway had 11.7 rebounds and four assists, all of them season highs. St. Bonaventure, the, uh, the only common team these two teams have on their schedule, Boston College. Uh, defeated uh, St. Bonaventure in overtime, 105 to 96. Jakeway, who's number one in the conference in threes, misses his first attempt. Edwards throws it into the hands of Louis Hinnant, and he's not going to turn it over. Smith to reverse it. That's Ryan Sidney. You know, that stat you gave earlier, one turnover every 38 minutes, that's that's a bad way to start because it's tough to live up to for four years. Well, it may not be a turnover from Louis Hinnon, but it's a bad pass from Nate Dornicamp. One Nate throws it out of bounds, another Nate checks into the ballgame. Nate Gerwig back into the ballgame for John, big John Edwards, as Al Skinner exhorts his troops. Turnovers, one more for Kent State than for Boston College. Kent State had led as many as six. That lead has been cut in half. Glad you could join us on the Kent State Sports Network on Fox Sports Net. Bill Needle along with Les Levine. Troy Bell forced Eric Hout to cross over, and the crossover hit Hout's foot. Make that turnover number five on the Golden Flash. Well, based on what you said about Eric Hout, that he was just a long-range shooter last year, he's still learning about the game, but uh, it looks like he's, he's, he's been a quick study out there. Nate Dornicamp a seat on Al Skinner's bench and into the ball game for BC Andrew Bryant, 6'7 junior from Denison, Texas. Bell still has only taken one shot from the floor. Bryant loves to put him up from the perimeter. He shot more threes than he has twos for the last two years. Offensive rebound for BC. Well, you don't see Bell forcing it, do you? Nope, and you see Eric Hout foul him, and Eric Hout fouled out last game as well. That's Eric Hout's first foul. There's a 5'7 guard for St. Bonaventure named Marcus Green that bedeviled the Kent State guards last week. If there's a problem with Eric Hout, it may be his quickness. And Troy Bell will certainly do his best to exploit it. Three ball, good ball. Troy Bell, two threes, he's got six points on the evening. Well, Boston College didn't get phased by uh, Kent State getting off to a quick lead. They've come right back to tie to 12. Kent State able to get the ball in the paint whenever they want. Again, Antonio Gates, nine points for Gates. Good entry pass from Anthony Wood. Well, they really haven't played Hinnant at the traditional point spot, although he's out there now. But when they bring it down to set up the half-court offense, he's not there. That's right, Ryan Sidney is such a difficult matchup. You can play Sidney wherever you want on the floor. He's wearing number five right now. He's coming out to the foul line for Boston College. Has the ball. Guarded by Wilkins. Wilkins is five inches taller. You wonder about the quickness there. Oh. Eric Howe, knocked down. Sidney's follow, knocked down. Gerwig, rebound on the bottom. No extra points for that, except if they give hustle. Eric Howe.
as high up on the floor as Kent State is working their offense, that's going to give them a lot of room to work underneath. Gates feeling it. Not this time. Troy Bell, three on two. Advantage BC. Out holds him up. Bryant just loves the perimeter ball. Three for and Andrew. One. And a three for Andrew Bryant, and three he is fouled. Andrew Bryant. That was an NBA three and then some. Franklin Edwards and I talked in the first game, Bill, that sometime we, when you get a college game, and we're going to see it right now as Bryant just unloads, sometimes when uh, a college game is played at a pro venue and you've got the double lines out there, sometimes it's, it's deceiving, and, and some of these players think that that big line, the NBA line, is where they've got to be. Andrew Bryant, 67% free throw shooter. He's attempted 36 three-point field goals this year and made 13 of them. He's attempted 22 point field goals. Why bother going in the paint? Why bother getting close, Mr. Bryant? Misses that one. It's a timeout on the floor. Kent State had been leading by as many as six. Now they find themselves down by one. State University, less number of years ago, you were the voice of the Golden Flag. I was, although in my tenure, uh, not uh, they weren't quite as good either in football or basketball uh, as they have in your tenure and the tenure just before. I was there in the the mid 70s uh, just after the Don James years in football and into the uh, the Rex Hughes and Ed Dauma era which I, I think some people might like to forget not me I had a great time <laughs> Kent State back at it they had led 10 to 5 and the run has now been 10 to 4 favor of Boston College Haynes to Jake Wade Jake Wade delivers Bill you had mentioned earlier that that Gates wasn't having trouble getting inside, but everybody else is. Not much of an inside game for, C for uh, Kent State. Mostly been around the perimeter. Anthony Wilkins sneaks into the passing lane. Kent State seesawing their way through the first half. Anthony Wilkins can shoot the three. Not that time. Hinnant and Sidney, two on one against Haynes. Louis Hinnant finishes. First two of the game for Louis Hinnant. Well, that's the same change up on the shot that they had earlier. And uh, they're not forcing it. The, the, the first thought is to go up and get that basket, but he set them up defensively and then got the easy two. Anthony Wilkins, a little tentative there. John Edwards on the low left block. Uh, over the top of Smith. Jakeway kept it alive. Edwards got fouled. Edwards is keeping it alive. Jakeway gets it to Edwards, who scores, and he will get a free throw. Well, he had four shots inside about two feet, and he finally got it. I'm not so sure anybody in the MAC uh, can contend size-wise with uh, John Edwards. There's a fellow at Central Michigan named Chris Kamen that's as big as John, but Edwards is a good player inside. He's got very good footwork, and he's very athletic, and you can see his hands. Well, he jumped four times in a matter of about 10 seconds. Very good athlete is John, big John Edwards. Looking for the old-fashioned three-point play. He's six out of 10 from the foul line this year. Is Brian Bedford checking into the ball game? Matt Jakeway expended a lot of energy keeping the ball alive on Kent State's offensive board. He has a seat on the Kent State bench. Brian Bedford, hard nose, does it all. He's played in every game since coming to Kent State from Racine, Wisconsin, three years ago. John Edwards, three-point play. Well, they only exchanged one inch in height on that uh, change with Jakeway coming in and, and Bedford coming out, but there's a lot of bulk that comes in. Brian Bedford isn't going to get too far out on the floor. Troy Bell and DeAndre Haynes working it out front. BC now 6 of 14 from the field. Louis Hinnon over the top of the backboard. That one doesn't fall. Kent State up by two. Jim Christian looking to go 7 and 1 in his first season as a head coach. Not a lot of people start out like that. They usually take over programs that struggle. If, if you uh, go in as a head coach, that's because there might have been a problem somewhere. That said, no coach in Kent State history ever started 3 and 0 in his first year. Turn it over once again, and that is turnover number eight for Kent State. That's about eight more than Jim Christian would like in a month. Troy Bell, short. Good hustle to the defensive glass by DeAndre Haynes. What's up, 
Eric Cowd hasn't had any offense yet. And he's averaging about 15 points a game. Going to have to look to get Howd involved somehow. Bedford's quickness finds Edwards. Cutting Gates. Gates into double figures with 11. Hey, give Edwards a lot of credit. Normally the big men just want to go up with that, but he saw the cutting Gates. We got the, well, I was going to say easy two. It, it took a while to, to get that easy two. First assist of the millennium for John Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> Might be his first assist of his career. John, 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 he's not going to hurt you yeah. out there. Oh, John. He, he gets the Inca Dare Award, right? Yeah, that's it. He just got to, now has more assists than Inca Dare. <laughs> Some substitutions, Ryan Sidney for Louis Hinnant and Craig Smith for Nate Dornicamp while Antonio Gates takes his first rest of the evening and he is replaced by Anthony Wilkins. That'll be Sidney to inbound it. Dead ball foul. With DeAndre Haynes, a freshman mistake. That's his second personal foul and now Jim Christian gonna have to do a little maneuvering, if you will. You can see his assistant, Gino Ford, the little bald man there, who was an all-Mac player at Ohio University. Craig Smith is not blocked out, and that'll kill you every time. Well, I gotta believe that was Edwards' uh, job to block out. He wasn't even close. Eight points for Craig Smith. Smith's been averaging almost 22 points a game during this five-game winning streak for BC. Wasn't there a four playing for Ohio U for about 15 years in a row? <laughs> that was uh, Gino and his brother Dustin. DeAndre Hayes can't finish. Edwards keeps it alive. Ryan Bedford doing the little thing. Edwards, good footwork, bad hands. This is Troy Bell. He loves the three, does Bryant. Loves it. You can't figure out why he's open all the time. <laughs> I'm always open, coach. I'm taking it. Yeah. He, he should know that it doesn't have to be a 30-footer, though. <laughs> doesn't they don't give hit. you an extra point every five feet of increments. He doesn't get to hit. But, coach, I'm open. There's a reason. There's a reason. You're 13 out of 37 from behind the arc this right. year. Kent State by two. Glad you could join us on Fox Sports Net. Bill Needle along with Les Levine. This is the nightcap of the Rock and Roll Shootout. Bowling Green over Cleveland State in the opener. Eric Howe, that's an NBA three. And that's off. Jake Way knocked to the ground, no call. Boston College able to get out and run. Right? Yeah, I, I'm telling you that there, if there is no NBA three-point line there in a college game, there's not nearly as many shots taken from that distance as there are in a game like this. That is Ryan Sidney who finished for Boston College to tie it at 21. Out gets to the paint. So does Wilkins. Edwards. Edwards. I'll tell you what, the perimeter people look for Edwards inside, and as long as he, he develops, as long as he uh, comes through like that, there's no reason to stop. Five points for Big John Edwards on the low left block. That's Sidney over the top of Wilkin. Jake Way can't hang on. Jermaine Watson into the ball game, runs over Jake Way, turn it over. Fouls on Jermaine Watson. Kent State, Boston College, riding a seesaw in the first half of the nightcap of the Rock and Roll Shootout. Stay with us, right? As my friend, that I am not about to get involved in second guessing. I, I noticed that you didn't even want to look at that. No, sir, you're out on the you're island all by yourself. Busy doing all kinds of other stuff. Uh, it's Matt Jakeway with Jermaine Watson. Jakeway, transfer from Austin P. Had a great game against St. Bonaventure a week ago today. Keeping Gates out of the middle, skip pass, taken away by Jermaine Watson. Ryan Sidney, past Wilkins, he's so good. John Edwards showing you a little bit of jump in there. Jake Way. Gates guarded by Bryant. Great pass to Edwards, and that's a goal, Tim. No, it's not. That's it's a, a foul. foul. Foul on Ryan Sidney, but did you see the way the 6'2 fella got up high? Well, that's a seven-footer taking that shot. Let's take a look at it. They get the pass in, and, and he thinks he's got an easy one. It was not goaltending, believe it or not, but uh, the body of Sidney got on him. Well, not really. If, if anything, it was Edwards' hand pushing off. Les, I can't say this too often. Ryan Sidney was the leading rebounder in the nation last year for players 6'2 or under. He got eight rebounds a game yeah. in Division I basketball at 6'2. He just blocked the guy at seven feet tall, and it was not goaltending. John Edwards now one for two at the free throw line this evening. 
Well, we expected two good ball games here at the Rock and Roll Shootout. You had Bowling Green at and uh, Cleveland State earlier on. That was a good ball game. Finally won by uh, Bowling Green by eight, 80 to 72. And this one looks like it's going up and down all the way. John Edwards splits the pair. He's got six points on the evening. Nate Gerwig to check in for John, big John Edwards. Nate Gerwig as Al Skinner takes a look at what goes on. Al Skinner played in the NBA. I don't think he played with your partner, Franklin Edwards. I think they missed each other with the 76ers by a year yeah, or two. I think that's right. And as you look at Gerwig, he came in at his right shoulder, of course, with the shoulder injury, and he's got that, he's got a tape on the outside. He's also got some kind of a contraption inside. Craig Smith misses. Eric Hout climbs up higher than anybody six foot good. Anthony Wilkins in transition. Gerwig on the low left block likes it there. Jermaine Watson very active on defense. This is a team that doesn't necessarily have traditional players at every position, but less they've got guys who can play the game. Well, and they rotate around, as we mentioned earlier, with Bell out at the point, even though he's not the traditional point guard. Hinnant is, but you're right. They've got versatility and can move all over, which makes it tough to prepare for. A little bit more than two years with Kent State. Nate Gerwitz shooting at 71%. That'll be a record if we can keep it up. It'll be amazing if we can keep it up. Gates working. Gates has it turned over. A little bit too much by himself. And once again, Boston College gets out to run it. Jermaine Watson's first two of the evening. Can stay by the slimmest of all possible margins. Now they were able to cut off the fast break for the most part, but that time the, the numbers were just too big, I think, three on one. Call a turnover. And that'll be turnover number eight on Kent State. I think when Wilkins caught that ball, his, he was, his feet were already moving. Couldn't understand why that call was made, but it was the proper call. Boston College has seven points off seven Kent State turnovers. Kent State has yet to capitalize on any of the five DC turnovers. Craig Smith scores. You know, that was a better play than he'll get credit for because he was bobbling that ball all over the place so, and then he went up for the shot. It was hard to believe he had a good handle on it, but he did. Craig Smith, first BC player in double figures. He's got 10. Antonio Gates has 11 to lead all scorer. Eric Hout is held by Troy Bell. Yes, he was. First foul on Troy Bell. And that is the sixth team, a fifth team foul, I beg your pardon, on the Eagles of Boston College. Troy Bell not pleased. Nate Dornacamp into the ball game. Craig Smith a seat on the BC bench. Well, Dornacamp is not in the early going, hasn't shown the ability to cover up inside. Now six lead changes in this game with Boston College on top by one. Eric Hout playing the point now with DeAndre Haynes on the bench. There's Gates where he's been to a cutting Jakeway. Jakeway doesn't finish, but Gerwig on the offensive glass will go to the line for two. The foul is on Andrew Bryant. That is his second. Well, that was good to see with Gerwig, who went up with what looked like a uh, an awkward right-handed hook shot, but at least that means he's not afraid of extending that right shoulder. As you see Jakeway on the backside cut, it was a beauty. Uh, somebody got a hand in the way, and he couldn't uh, put it away, but you'll see Gerwig right here. And uh, when that injury took place, I'm not sure a lot of people would have thought he'd been able to even do that much with the right arm. Nate Gerwig rolls it around the rim. He's a 63% free throw shooter. Missed the first one, did the sophomore from Pittsburgh Shenley High School. Bedford comes back in, and Jakeway takes a seat. Brian Bedford into the game, and no points. Matt Jakeway to the bench with two points. You were at the game against Cleveland State that Nate Gerwig shot eight for eight from the floor. He had 20 points. He could have had 30. That it looked like he, was, he could have had whatever he wanted that night. Gerwig's third point of the evening. Kent State ties it up. Troy Bell, Big East Co-Player of the Year two years ago, has a chance to become BC's all-time leading scorer. Nate Dornicamp throws it from one corner to the other. I'm guessing Jim Christian will say, you can have that shot all night. Gates, that's the second time in a row Gates got into too much traffic. Yep, he'll get up in the air and try and make the pass, and there's a player, can oh, they call the foul on Eric out. Hout tried to sneak in front of Jermaine Watson, and they called it on Hout. That's his second. Well, it takes the basket away. The foul took place away from the ball after the pass. You'll see it right here as Watson runs over Jakeway and 
talked about this many times, Bill. Uh, you, in basketball, you should have the ability to decline the penalty. I agree. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Jim Christian less than pleased about that call. He felt that Eric Hout was in position. Nate Dornikamp's going to get to think about that shot he just took from the <laughs> he, won't be able, from he won't be able to shoot from where he's at right now. The perspective of the bench. Craig Smith jump hook from behind the angle of the backboard. How, how many times do you think they'll stop that film when they show it and just rerun it? Not a good shot, Nate. <laughs> Not a good shot. Wilkins for three. No go. Gerwig clearing out some space. Taking up some room. Winnebago man. Here comes Troy Bell, three on one, pulls up for three. Craig Smith follows and finishes a dozen for Craig Smith. Boston College by two. I'll never forget the first time that the three-point shot came into college ball. I saw somebody pull up on a three on one like that with a three. I said, what the heck was that? And when you think about it, they got numbers underneath, just like they did just then. They may get the three. If not, they should have an easy rebound. You got a three-point threat in Troy Bell. That's not for whom the bell toils. He tolls for three. This is Gates. Fall away. Cooled off a little bit since he took it over early on, did Antonio Gates. Boston College, for a seven-man rotation, really likes to push whenever possible. Yeah, but they know when to slow it up, too. Craig Smith. Bedford keeps it alive. Smith gets the offensive glass. And that's Gates. Eric Hout, travel. Eric Hout committing a turnover. Turnover number nine for the Golden Flashes. Kent State turning it over. They find themselves down by two in the nightcap of the Rock. Consecutive rock and roll shootout at the Gund Arena. And of course, it's worked out very well for MAC teams. It gives some of them a chance to play on this floor where the, where the uh, MAC tournament uh, has been held for the last several years. And as you suggested, Kent State has felt very much at home here. Uh, the Golden Flash is now 10 of 25 from the field for 40%. The Eagles at the 12 of 32, that's for 37.5. Boston College, a chance to get four point lead. Not on that shot by Watson. Rebound by Gates. Antonio Gates, rebound number four. Ahead to Gerwig. Gerwig has it knocked off his leg by Jermaine Watson. And that's what Al Skinner is completely livid over talking about the ball hit his knee and it may very well have referee Lamar Simpson said to give it to Anthony Wilkins. Well, I think it hit Watson after it hit the knee of Gerwig. Anthony Wilkins the inbound it. Eric Hout. A good long range shooter but not from that long a range. <laughs> Gerwig drop step. Gerwig keeps it alive but Bell scoops it. Pull up. Short. Well, he wasn't squared up at all. He had legs flying all over the place, which is why he came up short on the shot. Akimbo, as they yeah. say. Gates likes to work in the corner. Dips the shoulder and is fouled. I don't think there's anybody in the MAC that can even come close to stopping that move, sweeping the left-handed sweep across the lane. And I say in the MAC, there aren't a lot of people who can stop that shot anyway. One of the people in the Kent State traveling party on one of our recent road trips said, Les, I don't think Antonio Gates would play any differently no matter what conference he were in. He'd still be 20 points and seven rebounds. Antonio Gates began his career in Michigan State. And Antonio Gates now with 12 points on the evening. Well, he's gone, he's, uh, gone uh, from, from being, I don't even want to say a role player. He was a significant player, but he had a lot of people around him. That may not be the case anymore. And he's now, uh, he's now the man on this team. Oh, Antonio Gates in the NC2A tournament in Atlanta in the regional first team all tournament. Antonio Gates tonight with 13 in the first half. And he's a second half scorer. Glad you could join us in the nightcap of the rock and roll shootout from Gund Arena here in downtown Cleveland. Bill Needle and Les Levine on Fox Sports Net, and we're delighted you could join us on a Saturday evening in the middle of the holiday season. That's Craig Smith. He's had a great night so far with 12 points. Look to reverse the ball. Got a lot of ball handlers. That's a kick on Eric Hout. We reset the shot clock. Bill, it's interesting. We talked about this earlier with Hinnant, who is such a great ball handler and a controller of the game with so few turnovers. Yet he doesn't handle the ball much at all. You'd think they put it in his hands all the time. Well, maybe, you know, that, that's kind of that double-edged sword. Less maybe that's why he doesn't turn well, the ball over that much. That, that was my next, uh, my next point. Well, somebody's got to get the ball to the big fellas because Nate Dornikamp isn't going to hurt you out there. No, he's not. 
But Troy Bell is. Quick pull up jumper over the backboard. Troy Bell thus far on the evening is shooting two out of six and or two out of seven and five of those seven are from behind the three point arc. Troy Bell uh, certainly looking to find the range and the thing with shooters less is that they can they can turn that streak on any second. And they always know the next one's going in. Yeah, you got to have you gotta be like a defensive half. You have to have no conscience and a short memory. Inside one minute left in a tie game. Brian Bedford pull up jumper. B B Brian Bedford first two of the night. Kent State back by two. Seesaw. We've had lead changes seven times now, Les. And I believe the biggest was six points at 8-2 by Kent State. Boston College led it by four just a couple of seconds ago. Craig Smith's got it anytime he wants it on the low right block. But Troy Bell says, no, nah, I think I'll up it from about 25. Troy Bell, nine points, three times three equals nine. The three point man from BC out of Minneapolis. Nine points for Boston College. Kent State has about 10 seconds to get something done. They'll put it up with about six seconds, allowing time for an offensive rebound or a breakaway. That's Jermaine Watson. He finishes Jermaine Watson as the horn sounds to end the first half. We played 20 minutes less and three points different. Yeah, BC 32-29. And that hurt at the end because Kent State with the last possession down by one. And as you say, they're going to try to get the shot off with six so at least they can get a rebound. Then it all broke out on them because uh, they, they come up uh, with a turnover and a basket the other way. So it's he scores 72% of his points <laughs> in the second half. So Antonio Gates with a Baker's dozen in the first half going to need a little bit of help. And I think in particular, Eric Hout is going to have to step out because Eric Hout's a number two scorer on the team, averaging 14.4 on the season. Eric Hout in the first half scoreless as he was in the first half against St. Bonaventure. And, last and week. Gates came out strong out of the box in the first four or five minutes. And even though he had 13 total in the first half, he wasn't that much of a factor after that. You are correct, sir. Gates being guarded in the paint. You can see Craig Smith running and DeAndre Haynes gets it back from Gerwig. Reverse it. There's Gates in the paint. Has it knocked away and Craig Smith picks it up. Turnover number 16 for the Golden Flash. Well, he had it knocked away, but really that was in between a bounce pass and a chest pass, and it was in no man's land. Louis Hinnon out front with the 6'7 Anthony Wilkins guarding him. That's a five-inch height advantage. DeAndre Haynes getting baptism under fire with Troy Bell. That's Ryan Sidney in the paint. Gerwig to Howe. To Gates. BC had their head turned. And DeAndre Haynes had a chance to spot up. Freshman out of Detroit for three. First three of the night. Kent State gets three out of that one. It looked like Gates had the opening in the lane to go all the way, and he gave it up, and they got three instead of two. His instincts are phenomenal, Les. You have to watch him play every game. Nate Dornikamp continues to shoot the big jumper, continues to miss. Maybe Boston. that's what Jim Christian said. Make sure Dornikamp continues to hit. Yeah, continues or to, to, to shoot. shoot, rather. Yeah. Ryan Sidney will inbound the ball. A very close encounter of the rock and roll kind. Five ties, eight lead changes. You're open, Nate. You're open. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Sidney got that in between move. You know, that's what makes him tough. Shoots it up in between, not at the peak of his jump, and it's 6 2. That's why he's able to get, get the ball off in traffic. Just DeAndre Haynes guarded by Louis Hinnon goes right by him. Hinnon bumped him. Knocked out of the bounds by Troy Bell, 24 on the shot clock. Al Skinner, respected by everyone in his profession. Outstanding job at Rhode Island and an equally outstanding job at Boston College. Three-point lead at the half for Boston College, and the man with the ball, DeAndre Haynes, hit a three about 30 seconds ago to tie it up. Now they're going to call Dornicamp away from the ball against Gates. First foul of the evening on Nate Dornicamp. First team foul in the second half against BC. Inbounding the ball on the baseline will be Eric Hout. That's Gates. Great ball reversal. Gerwig. Got it. 
Nate uh, Gerwig. Nate Gerwig. And they've got to get the points inside, and, and I think Al Skinner knew that because as soon as they get it inside, there's a double and a triple there to try to stop it. Five points for Nate Gerwig, Kent State, back by a deuce. Terrific look to Craig Smith. Good foul by Gerwig, kept the three-point play from occurring. Nate Gerwig whistled for his second foul of the evening, and Craig Smith is probably his least effective aspect of his game, free throw shooting. Well, he'll go to the line for two. Gerwig a little late. You said he, he kept him from uh, getting that drive, but Gerwig was late to, uh, and that, that's the reason that shot was even there. Craig Smith in the first half. No free throw attempts, and gentleman who shoots him at 59.6% is going to find that percentage go down just a bit as he misses the first. The possession before that, Al Skinner was calling for a back screen, and he didn't get at that possession, but he did on that one, which uh, results in, in the foul shooting attempts. Craig Smith splits the pair. He's got 13 points on the evening. Kent State by one. We're glad you could join us on a Saturday night on Fox Sports. Net Bill Needle along with Les Levine. Kent State, Boston College, the second game of a great doubleheader in the Rock and Roll Shootout. The balance bar, Rock and Roll Shootout. There's Eric Hout. Well, There's that three. Yep, you said they've got to get scoring from Hout. And as if on cue, they get a big three. And Kent State now jumps it up to a four-point lead. Adjustments at halftime, always the measure. That's an NBA three by Troy Bell. Dornekamp kept it alive, but the foul is going to be called on Nate Gerwig, who throws his hands up and says, Hokey Smokies, what did I do? <laughs> that is not what he said. Third foul on Nate Gerwig, two team fouls on Kent State. you got to start watching for John Edwards now. Going to have to be John Edwards to get it done for a few minutes anyway. Well, that pass wasn't there. Boston College got away with one that that scored it out to Hinnon. This is Louis Hinnett, a freshman from Oxon Hill, Maryland. Troy Bell, who needs to average about 15 points a game to become BC's all-time leading scorer. Ryan Sidney, strong. Dornicam knocked it out of bounds, Kent State ball. Jim Christian sends John Edwards into the ball game. John Edwards for Nate Gerwig, one center for another. Jim Christian shown a number of outstanding traits as a head coach in this his first season as the number one man. Nate Gerwig coming off a shoulder injury. He's still not 100%. Perhaps uh, the three fouls a result of being less than 100%. DeAndre Haynes just beat Troy Bell. Well, he tried to go in against four Boston College Eagles on that one. And uh, he will wind up drawing that foul. You got to give up your body for the squad for the good of the team, Mr. Levine. And DeAndre Haynes is finding that out. How to inbound. Haynes. BC, 3-2 zone. Gates trying to go against it. Finds out. He'll go into the paint with it. Can't finish it. He expected contact and didn't get it. And Boston College dodges a bullet. They're going to retain possession. And frankly, I didn't see anybody from Kent State who knocked it out of bounds. Well, Al Skinner trying to get a foul out of that. They tried to, they ripped it out of the hands of, uh, of, of Dornicamp. And you got two big guys in Dornicamp and Edwards against each other. Ryan Sidney trying to go against Anthony Wilkins, shuffled his feet. Ryan Sidney trying to get a little more effective in the paint than he had been anywhere on the floor in the first half. Kent State trailed by three at the half. They lead it by three now. I'll let you figure out how many points they've turned around all on your own. Well, they led by six at one time, eight to two, and now they can match that or go one better with a three. This is how. Very quick zone for Boston College. Antonio Gates draws the foul. Well, Kent really not showing a lot of inside game, Bill, but when you've got Gates, he can create an inside game all by himself. There may not be an inside presence, but they still have to account for him all over. And there you see clearing out, nobody comes to help out. Another thing I've learned is we see Antonio Gates draw the foul on Nate Dornicamp, which is his second. Where you put your players on the floor is so very important to breaking down a defense. Gates hits the first. Gates has got 14. That's his first point of the second half. Well, they have to also honor the fact that, that and they've seen it tonight, with his uh, peripheral vision and uh, ability to find the open man, they can't just go in and assume he's going to the basket. So they've yeah. got to back off on that, too. 
Gates hits a pair. He's got 15 on the evening. He averages 20.4 per game. Matches the biggest lead of the game at six. This is Troy Bell with a freshman guarding him, DeAndre Haynes. Craig Smith shuffled his feet, got away with it, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Referee Lamar Simpson with the call. Call the foul on John Edwards. Antonio Gates. Oh, Gates. Antonio Gates. First foul on Antonio Gates. Here you see it, Gates trying to guard. Now there's that quick step to the baseline. There's the bump. And Edwards uh, was behind the play. Craig Smith, one for two at the line thus far. 13 points on the night. Rather have him there than on the low block with the clock yeah. running. Second throw for Craig Smith. Six foot seven inch freshman from Fairfax High in Los Angeles. Played a year at Worcester Prep. Probably placed there by the BC Eagles, I would imagine. 14 points for Craig Smith and a five point lead for Kent State. Sure you do. Other than that bracket buster game, uh, Kent State stays in the MAC the rest of the way. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Boston College having a little trouble getting on track in the second half. Oh, out of five from the floor, and that's not going to stay that way, uh, no matter how much we hope. Glad you could join us at Gund Arena. Bill Needle and Les Levine for the second game of the Rock and Roll Shootout doubleheader, the Balance Bar doubleheader. Antonio Gates misses the jumper into the hands of Troy Bell. I'm really impressed with Bill because he does not force anything out there. No, he does not. That's Craig Smith with a great turn. John Edwards sends it out. Bedford's hustle keeps it alive, and the Kent State Golden flashes on a run. Gates finishes. Well, he started and finished. He put a great move on Dornicamp, who didn't have a chance in the open floor. That's Troy Bell. That's good. Yep. That's a dozen for Troy Bell. Four baskets times three equals 12. Three pointers all the way for the man from Minneapolis. After 14 turnovers in the first half, Kent with Jack Kent State just with one in the first five minutes of the second half. Gates, three, long three, short. Oh, how lucky the flashes can be. Ryan Bedford wants to slow it down. Eric Howe tries three. Eric Howe hits three. That is six for Eric Howe. Two three-pointers in this half. Kent State, biggest lead of the night is seven. Bill, we mentioned it half. Well, we'll pick it up in a minute. This is a shootout. <laughs> it's Troy Bell. He's got 15. Five times three equals 15. Five three-pointers for Troy Bell. The most he's had, I believe, is seven in a game. Kent State a little more willing to run some clock, given their four-point lead. Brian Bedford had John Edwards on the block. Gates beats the zone. Gates is fouled, and the call isn't made. Craig Smith got away with one as far as I'm concerned. Bill, on that play, it, it, we've seen it several times. When a guy like that drives, it doesn't seem like there's any help defense at all. And I don't know if that's the discipline to, to stay away from helping on the backside. Look at this. As he gets around, somebody gets in and slaps a hand, but that's about it. Out to inbounds and does to Gates. I wonder if Kent State knows about the shot clock. And down to eight. Yes, they do. John Edwards misses Craig Smith, rebounds. Here comes Troy Bell. He's hit three three-pointers in a row. Make it four. 18 points for Troy Bell. He leads all scores. Boston College back to within one. Well, in February of this year, he hit seven against Providence for his own personal best. He's got, what, six now? Antonio Gates trying to work his way open on the baseline. Right now, he's in the deep right corner. John Edwards finishes. Great entry pass by DeAndre Haynes, and John Edwards has eight on the evening. Well, you saw Edwards go with the sweeping right-hand hook a minute ago. This time, he comes with the drop step and the turnaround going the other way. Ryan Sidney. Fine bill. Craig Smith is fouled by John Edwards. Now you got to start counting personal fouls. That's two on John Edwards. His cohort in the five spot, Nate Gerwig, has three. So you've got five between them. Ten is the limit. Well, actually, I thought when Gerwig went out with three, it might have 
it might have been a problem for Kent State, but uh, in, now their lead is three, but they had upped it to seven at that point. So they got to be happy with every minute that goes by, and they hold on to that lead without Gerwig in there. Third trip to the line tonight for Craig Smith. He's two out of four. He's three out of five. He's got 15 points on the game. Smith came in shooting about 60% from the foul line. Well, Bell, who's now one away from his personal high to tie in three-point shots made, his uh, personal high in a game is 42 points. He did that against Iowa State back in December of 2001. One out of two for Craig Smith. And once again, Kent State looks to control the tempo of the ball game, feeling that maybe they can play it a little bit better than Boston College can play. Gates has the ball. That's Andrew Bryant guarding Bell comes out to double team. They want Gates to give up the ball. That's what they're trying to do, is get Gates to give up the ball. While falling, finds John Edwards. Talk about vision. Ten points for Edwards. Ryan Sidney from the corner. Three points. Now threes up add, add up an awful lot quicker than twos. And between Bell and Sidney, they're starting to ring it up and they've cut the lead to just one. Five points on the night for Ryan Sidney. Kent State goes back to a bit of a tempo game. Point forward, Antonio Gates. Skip pass to Wilkins. Down low to Edwards. What Edwards has an advantage there. Well, he's made three different shots his last three attempts. John Edwards has tied the season high, 12 points. It's also his career high for John Edwards. And it's a great adjustment by Kent State to get the ball into him, to reverse the ball around. Now let's see what DC does. Here. Well, you know Andrew Stewart likes a triple. <laughs> and Andrew Bryant, and he Andrew gets the Bryant. triple. That's his second on the evening. He's got six. Rarely do you see a three-pointer get all over the rim, but that one did on that high arching shot. Two three-pointers for Andrew Bryant, taking a page out of Troy Bell's book. But Troy Bell's got six of them. And it's a 50-50 chance. We've got a good one going. Anthony Wilkins is fouled. They're going to call that foul against Craig Smith. Foul on Craig Smith this is his first of the game. Anthony Wilkins will go to the free throw line. Anthony Wilkins is 68% free throw shooter. Three points on the night, one three-point basket. Well, BC didn't seem to be bothered by that seven-point deficit at 44-37 because they've come right back in rapid-fire succession. And a bunch of threes by Bell and Sidney has uh, made this a 50-50 game, and Wilkins misses the first. Anthony Wilkins, two out of three in his last game against St. Bonaventure. you got to figure a guy who shoots 53% from the floor, and this is on the move in jumpers, be a little bit better than a 68% free throw shooter. Anthony Wilkins missed the first. We'll look to split the pair. He does. He's got four points. Kent State back by one. We've got 11.09 to play in the ballgame. Jim Christian in the golden flashes of Kent State looking to hang on. For the John McClendon uh, Award, the outstanding player for each team, the first game for Bowling Green, it was uh, John uh, Reimold who had 24 points, and for CSU, Modibo Niakate who had 23. There have been some pretty good winners over the last eight years prior to this. Derek Anderson, Danny Fortson, Lamar Odom, Bobby Brennan, and Kenyon Martin. I'd like that team. Yeah. <laughs> That's Nate Dornikamp and Ryan Sidney in the paint against Brian Bedford. And he's fouled by Brian Bedford. That's personal foul number one on B.B. Bedford. And Ryan Sidney will go to the free throw line. Ryan Sidney only five points on the night and has not been to the foul strike. You know, there have been some, here's the play inside, the turnaround and the 15 foul against, uh, against uh, Kent State. There have been some great games in the first eight years. Uh, Cincinnati won six games in a row at the shootout, and then they lost to Toledo back in 2000. Theo Dixon once hit a, a shot at the buzzer to beat Lamar Odom's Rhode Island team a couple of years ago. And Malcolm Sims of Cleveland State hit a shot with about 18 seconds left to beat Ohio State for Cleveland State. Ryan Sidney missed the first one. He's a 54% free throw shooter. And if Kent State is to win this one, it may very well be because of the free throw inaccuracy of Boston College. Sydney splits the pair. He's got six on the night. Boston College came into the ballgame 
shooting 67% from the free throw line. Kent State working it. DeAndre Haynes against Troy Bell. Wilkins trying to get free against Ryan Sidney. DeAndre Haynes looking for a five second call out of Boston College coaches. Antonio Gates got a seven footer on him. Skip pass. The ball is moved back to Gates. Here he goes. Haynes finishes. Wow. Antonio Gates does what he wants. What a combination of size and pick. Well, you saw him, you called it earlier, the last time he had the ball going up against Dornacamp. Dornacamp just can't stay with him. Ryan Sidney for three. Catches none. DeAndre Haynes, big rebound. Every possession now is going to start to matter as we go under 10 minutes. Into the corner. Wilkins likes that. Edwards can't keep it alive. Ryan Sidney on the run. No numbers. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Kent State had five men under the defensive glass. Perhaps an ill-advised shot as Al Skinner goes after referee. Well, yeah, actually, that was a great defensive play by Antonio Gates. There was no contact, and he just forced uh, forced them into a bad shot. Got to watch him one on four. This is Gates. Now they got him on who's quick enough. But what about the ball? See, if it's guy, if the guy like Sidney's quick enough, he may not have the ball. Three and Ryan Sidney, Jim Christian. Talk about having an ace of Trump in your hand. Doesn't matter who they put out there on Gates, there's an answer for it. Well, Gerwig comes back in now. 9.21 remaining in the game, and Gerwig had three fouls, and they, they weathered that storm very well. John Edwards also provided some points. Yes, he did. John Edwards, six points in the second half, equaling what he had in the first half. Edwards got a career-high 12 points, ties it anyway. Kent State leads it by two. Ryan Sidney is seen on the Boston College bench. Gates to inbound it into the hands of Wilkins. Gates with a little man on it to see what happens. Oh, the ball. Referee Lamar Simpson with the call. Boston College coach Al Skinner with the fit. As, as fast as his man went down, that's how quickly Skinner got up. Well, there's an elbow thrown by uh, Gates. I think even Gates thought it was a foul on himself. Two fouls on Jermaine Watson. Kent State to inbound the ball in the person of DeAndre Haynes. You can see in the background Skinner jumping up as that call was made. Anthony Wilkins will reverse it. Looking for Gates. Now he's got a big man on him. Now he's got the 6 7. Craig Smith guarding him. Let's see how the quick is going. Four different guys in four possessions. Wilkins can't get it to fall. Gerwig brought it down. Gates is there. Gates is fouled. It, it's a combination of instinct and skill and talent, but Gates is always around the ball. Al Skinner is yelling at everyone who has ears. Fouls on Andrew Bryant. Antonio Gates to the free throw line. Gates has 20, another four-tenths of a point, and he'll have his average. Now Skinner continuing the discussion. He says, we don't get a call no matter what kind of contact there is. Neil Gates from the free throw line. See about the curse of the play-by-play -play man. He's five for five. No, no problem there. We laugh at the curse. Yeah, well, Kent State had a lead of seven. And uh, every time Boston College ties it, the Golden Flashes come back and take that lead back. They haven't relinquished that lead in quite some time. Jermaine Watson guarded by Matt Jacob. A great rebound. Second chance points. Look at him throw the three. Andrew Bryant, three three-pointers, two of them in the second half. Nine points on the night. Six foot seven inch junior from Denison, Texas. I thought they didn't play basketball in Texas. It was just football. Yeah. Apparently, a few guys who didn't play football, although uh, it looks like he could have played. Boston College didn't need much help the other night against Toledo, did they? No, sir. 
House, three, count it. Well, he didn't show much of the first half, but he's come alive. He's made the difference here in the second. Three three-pointers for Eric out. Six three-pointers on the night for Troy Bell. He's looking to work himself for one. Craig Smith down low against Gerwig. No help. All he did was miss the shot. Gates with the rebound. Rebound number seven for Antonio Gates. You accept Gates is uh, much more prolific in scoring in the second half, but it's Hout that's made the difference there. You are correct. <laughs> Until then. Antonio Gates, 23 on the evening. Just kidding. Antonio Gates, athleticism and bulk. He hung in the air. NFL teams are interested in well, him. He's deceptively quick. No question about that. Here's a 30 called by Al Skinner of the Boston College Eagles. And Penn State has pushed their lead up to six. 32nd timeout here at Penn State. So full. We'll be back with more. Y'all stay tuned. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine taking your research to a higher level. Kent State undergraduates work side by side with scientists developing groundbreaking technologies, like a revolutionary liquid crystal display that actually flew on the space shuttle. That's higher education that can help you achieve a higher standard of success. Imagine Kent State University. Call or visit us on the web. Relax on now you can take the time. Share it in sweets, the sweet center of it all. Casual luxury. What a difference it can be. Share it in sweets, the sweet center of it all. Share it in sweets, the sweet center of it all. Penn State is led by as many as seven in the second half. They now lead it by a half dozen. We've got 7-18 to play in the ball game in the second game of this doubleheader called the Balance Bar Rock and Roll Shootout. In the opener, Bowling Green won on behalf of the MAC. They beat Cleveland State. Kent State on November 1st announced the achievement, the completion, the goal of their first ever university-wide $100 million fundraising campaign goal. It was eight months ahead of schedule. Kent State salutes the many alumni and friends who helped make this possible. Please continue to help make the difference in the future of a great Midwestern university. Kent State University, call 672-2222 or visit www.givetokent.org to get involved. Let's Bill, the, uh, at halftime, we talked about uh, Jim Christian uh, concerned about the turnovers as well. He should have been. They had 14 in the first half. In the first half minute of the second half, first possession, they had another turnover. In the last 12 and a half minutes, Kent State has not had one turnover. Troy Bell is able to score from inside the three-point line. He's got 20 on the evening. First basket for Bell. Six three-pointers, one two-pointer. It adds up to 20. DeAndre Haynes finds Gerwig. Kent State shooting 61% in the second half. Nate Gerwig, good muscle move. Make it about 64% now. Seven points for Gerwig. Clock becoming an issue. 646. Troy Bell guarded by DeAndre Haynes. Nate Gerwig flops. He should get a foul on him for bad acting. That's just, <laughs> you will not get a Golden Globe. You will not get an Oscar. You will flop. And Al Skinner says, it's about time one went my, one went my way. And we'll get a timeout with Four fouls on Nate left. Gerwig. We're going to come back and set the foul situation for you. But that's after this short break. The Rock and Roll Shootout on the Kent State. And then three more in the 0-2 MAC tournament. That's seven straight, looking to make it eight at a home away from home in Gundarina. Bill, there were a lot of reasons that Kent State could have pointed to if they got off to a bad start this year, a diff third different coach in three years. A whole bunch of players graduating, but uh, nobody said anything. They just went out and played, and it's showing again here tonight. Excellent execution out of the timeout by Boston College. Kent State in the nation, the second leading field goal percentage team. You can see the numbers that add up to that rating. Troy Bell is fell as foul by DeAndre Haynes. Haynes got a body up into him. Two throws, and DeAndre Haynes whistled for his third foul. Young man out of Detroit Southwestern, the same high school that provided the NBA 
with Rashawn Leonard, Howard Isley, and the best of them all, Jalen Rose. And in baseball, not too bad either with, uh, I believe, Willie Horton. Willie really Horton, yeah. <laughs> Troy Bell. 21 on the night for Troy Bell, senior from Minneapolis, and certainly a preseason first team All Big East performer. Troy Bell also last year a first team All Big East performer at the end of the year. He's got 21. Antonio Gates leads all scorers with 23. Now, Gurley got on the bench with four personal fouls. And Edwards back in there. Well, they try to use all 10 of them. Does Jim Christian and his staff, Geno Ford, Rob Murphy, Rob Senderoff, and Ryan Peavy. Eric Hout got Troy Bell to cross his feet on defense. And that is the eighth, ninth team foul on Boston College. Now, Eric Hout, Les, and I can't do the math for this. I can tell you he's 18 out of 19 from the free throw line this year. Actually, I can do the math. It's 94.4%. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's pretty darn good. Doggone good. Yeah. Doggone good. Eric Hout. And this one, make, that makes it easier to figure out now, 19 of 20. And for the second straight game, Eric Hout has had double figures in one half of play. He was scoreless in the first half last week against St. Bonaventure, scoreless in the first half tonight against Boston College. He now has 11 points, the same number he had last week in the second half against the Bonnies. Last week, Kent State lost. This week, it's another story. And they matched their biggest lead of seven, which they've had a couple of times. Craig, Craig Smith, Antonio Gates fouls him. Craig Smith is good as money down there. That was a great pass. Two fouls on Gates. And I must say, and this is definitely the curse of the play-by-play -play man. Take a look at this great well, pass. There's uh, the great pass inside, and Gates a little late in reacting. Now, I'm going to put the curse of the play-by-play -play, play man right out there. Craig Smith from the free throw line, three for six. Swish. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then obviously he's got to miss this one. Right, I still have a chance. Right. Craig Smith has 16 on the night. He's four out of seven from the free throw line. Numbers don't lie, my friend. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. He just didn't know how it was going to get to that point. Point forward with Antonio Gates playing the role of the point forward. Makes for difficult matchups. That's out. That's good. Yeah. He's hot. Hout is hot now. And that's the biggest lead of the night at nine. Eric Hout has 14. Kent State's Hout goes to the floor to try and keep the ball alive. It falls out of bounds off of Craig Smith, who pleads his case. Eric Hout delivering the jump shots and delivering the hustle points. Well, you love the points that he gets, but uh, the coaches will tell you that that's more impressive and that's more important to have. That's Antonio Gates at six foot five, 250 pounds, playing the point forward. Initiates the offense to DeAndre Hayes. Back to Gates. Got a little man on. Him. That's John Edwards on the low right block. Good ball movement. Shot clock an issue. Defensive rebound, Craig Smith. Well, if nothing else, they used up for almost the entire 35, and one less possession, perhaps, that BC can have here with a nine-point Kent State lead. Troy Bell. Louis Hinnon has not been an offensive presence, no. but Ryan Sidney's always a threat to score, but he's such a good passer. Craig Smith is a scorer. John Edwards has fouled. That foul on John Edwards is his third. So there's seven fouls from the big men, the three on Edwards and the four on Gerwig. Craig Smith back at the line, 16 points on the night, four out of eight from the free throw strike. Now I can't tell you how impressed I am with Kent State and what they've done here, not just tonight, but this, this whole season. And one of the things that I've learned over the years is the best teams don't try to do things they can't do. 
They allow the players to do what they do best. Now, as you see Antonio Gates, he can do just about everything. What Jim Christian does in his deployment of his players is he doesn't ask his guys to do things that they're not capable of doing. Well, Gates can do it all, but but he doesn't feel he has to at all times. He knows he has people he can uh, that can help him out. He, he could take over the game completely by himself, but he chooses not to do that. Or they choose that for him. Jim Christian wants a timeout. They're going to start to deal with the clock. 30 seconds. Um, you know, Kent State used to be thought of as a stepping stone to get out of there and go on. Uh, back, I'm talking in the 70s and 80s, and uh, well, 70s, not, not with Jim McDonald, but almost everybody else. And, but obviously they made the right choice in this case for that kind of moody purposes. Again, three coaches in three years. Eric Hout, the man of the last 20 minutes so far for Kent State. Got a feeling that the Eagles have got another run left in them. Although they, they haven't seemed to have been able to get the easy baskets that they did in the first half. They've had to work a lot well, harder. That goes with that turnover situation. Gates gets himself caught up in traffic. And with seven seconds on the shot clock, Kent State's going to have to get a play in and up. Those, those easy baskets, Bill, certainly a result of all the turnovers. Kent State hasn't had a turnover since uh, the first 30 seconds of the second half. And uh, 14 in the first half. Gates. Yep. Beat the shot clock, didn't he? Uh, by, by six seconds. <laughs> right. It's 25 points for Antonio Gates. He didn't need to shoot it that quickly. But I don't think there's anybody in blue and gold complaining. Craig Smith gets the players on his hip so quickly. John Edwards avoided a foul on the first one, but on the second one, it was John Edwards committing the personal. That's four. Now, Jim Christian's going to, well, we'll see what Jim Christian does. Comes well, he's with going Nate with he's going with Gerwig. Comes with Nate Gerwig. Well, you almost have to at this point. With four minutes left of the game, and both of them uh, with two fouls. I mean, the other choice is to, to let Edwards out there, maybe pick up another one, and then have Gerwig for the last couple of minutes. But I think he wants to make a stand right here. That's three in a row for Craig Smith, 19 points on the evening. And Nate Gerwig replaces John Edwards, who goes to the bench with four fouls and a season high 12 points. Second throw. Craig Smith looking for 20. Six games in a row, Craig Smith has had 20 points for Boston College. Five games in a row, Boston College has won. Eagles looking to keep that streak alive. Glad you could join us here at Gundarina in downtown Cleveland, the second game of the Balance Bar Rock and Roll Shootout. Bill Needle, Les Levine with you. Glad you could spend an evening with us here on Fox Sports Network. Kent State by seven. So under four minutes to play. Antonio Gates working on Ryan Sidney. Eric Hout finds Nate Gerwig. Gerwig's going to go to the line. Just a great pass by Hout. Everybody, uh, because Hout is so hot here in the second half, they were assuming he was going to take the shot, and at the last second he saw Gerwig inside. He couldn't, couldn't drop it home, but he will go to the line for two. It's all in the triangles. You have the three men involved, and Nate Gerwig gets himself to the free throw line. Now, on the night, Nate Gerwig from the line, one for two. One thing about Nate Gerwig I've noticed in the first eight games the last, you know he's going to miss him right away. <laughs> that one was no good from the time it left Just his before hand. it left his hand, you knew it was you no good. So it. what does he do, come back and make this one now? Well, he should. He's a 62% yeah. shooter. But look at that field goal percentage. Yeah. He's, he doesn't take that. Could be big. Nate Gerwig misses a pair. He stays at seven. Troy Bell has been quiet, try to jinx the play-by-play -play man again. Smith, 22 points. Gerwig came close to picking up his fifth foul on that one, but they let him play. And now this is a big possession for Kent State. Seven consecutive points for Boston College from Craig Smith. He's not a freshman anymore. We haven't even seen New Year's. Kent State's got to stay in their offense. They're holding the ball out a little bit too much. They're under three minutes, but they've got to continue to be continuous with their plays. There's Gates. He's, he's too quick for the big man, and he's still too quick for a big man to get position. Fouls on Craig Smith. It's his second. You know, Bill, sometimes when you work on that clock, and 35 seconds is not a long time, but when, when you get it inside five seconds left, there you see Gerwig. He's kind of out of control. But uh, he still gets away with uh, being fouled.
but sometimes when, when you work on uh, on uh, working on that clock you you forget uh, it's a it's a trite phrase but you forget what got you there and you get out of a total rhythm that's what i was trying to say don't take yourself out of the flow of the game Gates misses the first one. That's his first miss all night. He stays at 25 on the evening. Bedford comes in and Gerwig sits down. One thing uh, Jim Christian does very well, offense, defense, he does it beautifully. He's a great matchup coach. When Kent State doesn't have the ball, he'll buy time for his players. He'll also buy rest. He made the substitution to add the... You see in the last five and a half minutes exactly what Craig Smith has done to help Boston College cut the lead to one. Big possession for the Flashes. And again, they've been out of that offensive rhythm. It's been to get the ball to Gates and make something happen. Gates trying to make something happen. Has it knocked out of his hands, wanted a foul. Gates grabbing his groin, perhaps he's limping a little bit. 13 on the shot clock and 45 in the game. DeAndre Haynes to inbound the ball. Execution on the out-of-bounds play is critical. Eric Howe is held. Eric Howe tries to finish in his foul. And the best free throw shooter in the Mid-American Conference will go to the line. Fouls on Craig Smith. His third at this point. Number of fouls immaterial unless you got four. Well, the one, a couple of good things happened there for Kent State. It looked like all ball to me, but... A couple of good things happen. Uh, one is the sh the clock shows that they'll still get another possession here. I mean, how does automatic at the line? They get the two-point lead and probably will have the three-point lead, but they'll also probably be assured of getting the ball back no matter what Boston College does. Now Skinner calls timeout. To let Eric Howe think about that second free throw. Two-point alignment for Jim Trestle to make things happen. Well, maybe he's got one more national championship to get in the next week or so. Well, we'll find that out on January 3rd. And on January 4th, we'll find out if Eric Hout and the Kent State Golden Flashes can defend their Mid-American Conference Championship. 42 seconds remaining, and Hout about to make this a three-point lead. Eric Hout is three for three from the free throw line. On the season, Eric Hout is 21 of 22. Make it 22 of 23. Hout has 16. Three-point lead for the Golden Flashes. Hasn't under 40 seconds. Hasn't even been close to missing it. All execution and let the clock run. Well, I, I think they go for a, try to go for a quick two rather than a, running it down to three. Troy Bell in traffic, got it. Big shot, Troy Bell, 26 points, timeout. There's no need to run that clock down and try a three to send it to overtime. Too many things can happen. You've got almost 26 seconds here, and they've cut it to one. And as long as Eric Howe isn't sent to the foul line, anything can happen here for Boston College. Now, this is what we were talking about earlier, Les, and the importance of who you put on the floor and where you put them. Now, the best free throw shooters for Kent State, we've been talking about Eric Howe at 22 out of 23. After that, Antonio Gates is a 75% shooter. DeAndre Haynes is a 71% shooter. But it depends where Jim Christian puts his players to receive the inbounds pass, because you know Boston College is going to foul. Well, I don't, I don't think they foul this early. You've got 25.9 seconds. I don't think they have to, to really foul. I think they can go for the steal and try to make something happen. Maybe when you get inside 12 to 10 seconds, then, you, then you, you're forced to. I'd be very surprised to see an intentional foul this quick. Well, Boston College is going with 100% pressure, and the ball gets into the hands of the man that everybody wearing blue and gold wants it into, Eric Hout. Now you think about a foul. See, it's Haynes, Hout, and Gates. Those are the only three that are going to can handle the ball, and Brian Bedford is in the game as a good free throw And, and Hout was not going to get fouled. You, you said that only three could eliminate Hout, at least until it got to desperation time in the last five seconds. So Haynes can do it, but he hasn't done it so far tonight. Hout has. A year ago, DeAndre Haynes playing high school basketball in Detroit. Now, trying to knock off a Big East power. One for Haynes, four on the night. All right, if he makes this one, you can't go for the two points. I, I think they'll have to think in terms of going for the three to tie. If he misses, it's a totally different story. Just so you know, Troy Bell has attempted 46 four-point plays in his career. Two-point lead. 
Right, you want to go for the win or the tie here? Go for the win. I'll go for the win on the road, neutral site. Two or three. Oh, he beat him. Bell beat him. Bell got him. Troy Bell ties it 28 on the night. Clock is running. Kent State in the hands of Bedford, in the hands of Gates. Go! Oh, missed and we're going overtime. Now it wasn't Gates, it was Hayes that couldn't get it to Gates. Haynes missed Gates. the three-pointer. I said Gates. It's all right, it was Haynes. But Troy Bell with a sensational move to tie it up. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I like what Jim Christian did do or didn't do. Most coaches call a timeout in a situation like that. I think you can have, I think you can have so many things working your way if you catch them by surprise, you know where you want to go with it. I know where I want to go with it, <laughs> back here, and we're going to do it right after this short break. Season, Kent State beat Southwest Missouri State in overtime at the end of November, while Boston College beat St. Bonaventure to start this five-game winning streak. Boston College had a three-point lead at the half, 32-29. Kent tied it up right the first possession, and uh, Boston College has not led since then. Eric Hout is fouled by Craig Smith. That is his fourth. And one factor for, for Kent as Gerwig is back in the game. Both Gerwig and, uh, and Edwards with four fouls apiece. Eric Hout, scoreless in the first half, 16 points in the second. We'll look for 17 and or 18. Continues. You know, you, you get a foul shooter like that, I say if it hits the rim, it, it shouldn't count. Throw it back. Well, yeah. you know what? In practice, that's what he does. He doesn't count it. He shoots them so that they just get nicked. That one. Now he'll, he'll, in this case, he'll take he'll that He'll take one. it. It's a little sloppy, but he'll yes, take it. Yes, they got him in a slump. 18 for Hout. <laughs> Here comes BC. Troy Bell has been absolutely sensational. He and Craig Smith have scored the last 19 BC points. Eric Hout blocks Troy Bell. Well, it was Bell who tied it up. The last 19 points uh, between those two players on the uh, the two-man team and the two-man game, but it was Bell with a sensational driving move to the basket to tie the game with about seven seconds left. Kent State did not call a timeout. They took the ball down, got a pretty good shot, not the one they wanted, but Haynes missed a three. Here's the play we're talking about, and uh, Bell has been as good as advertised. This is the one that tied it up with seven seconds remaining. Look at that switch, and the uh, switch to the left hand for the driving basket. Troy Bell looking for 30. Where do you teach that move? You don't. <laughs> Kept alive to BC. Louis Hinn at the ball. Now a chance to lead for the first time since uh, the half. Craig Smith. Fouled by Anthony Wilkins. Craig Smith will go to the free throw line. That's the first foul on Wilkins. Craig Smith has been to the free throw line tonight a total of 12 times, all in the second half. He has hit eight of those 12 free throws. Almost 6,000 people here at the Gund Arena, which is about what was expected. Bill, I don't think they're too unhappy about that. No, it's been a great basketball game. Craig Smith has found the range from the free throw line. The number two man in the one-two punch of Bell and Smith has 25. He has also hit his last five consecutive free throws. Oh, he's a load. Going to get better, too. He's yeah. just a freshman. And that was not meant in a derogatory way. He's a load to cover. 22 consecutive points for Troy Bell and Craig Smith. Penn State down by a point. Last time BC led was 32-29, 30 seconds into the second half. Antonio Gates turns it over. Here's Bell. Anthony Wilkins takes it away. Sidney had a chance, but his own man knocked it out of his hand. DeAndre Haynes. Freshman handling the ball in overtime on an NBA floor against the Big East opponent. Won't be long before he's not a freshman anymore. Skip that pass out. Haynes, Gates. Gates, show. Has it taken away. That's Craig Smith. Well, I, I think when Jim Christian sees the film of this, 
and sees what happened with about three minutes left when they really took the air out of the ball. He may think about that differently next time that same situation comes up. Got to learn, Ryan Sidney in the paint is fouled. Ryan Sidney is fouled. He will go to the free throw line, and the foul's on Nate Gerwig. You know, Bill, I'm not saying that he made the wrong move. I'm just saying that that clearly was the turning point because Kent State was totally out of the flow offensively from that moment on. And they've not been able to turn it back on. Nate that, Gerwig fouls out of the game, Les, and he'll be replaced by John Edwards. Nate Gerwig fouls out of the ball game with seven points. Well, those two players, 55 of the 76 points between that two-man team. There's Nate Gerwig, and I'll tell you what, Kent State's got to be happy he's just available to play. 7.7 .7 rebounds for the sophomore from Pittsburgh. And now Ryan Sidney, who is usually the third man in the mix for Boston College, only has six points on the evening. Sydney had been averaging better than 15 a game, and that was really all the scoring that Boston College was going to bring to the table. Ryan Sydney, second throw. Missed them both. Yeah, well, you know what? That, that was it. Both times they were throws. They were not foul shots. They were throws. DeAndre Haynes handling the ball. Got to get somebody else involved besides Antonio Gates. Well, Hout was the man earlier, but they've, they've gone away from him. They run it through Gates and let him run it through Andrew Brown. Jump stop. Great move. Antonio Gates, 28. That's probably why they did it, Bill. Well, <laughs> I'm mean, guessing. You can't change what you've been doing. No. Everything goes through Gates. No, he's not stopping. They, they can't stop that. John Edwards is playing with a total of four fouls. That's Ryan Sidney. Great execution. Bryant finishes, and I think John Edwards. No, it's going to call it on Anthony Wilkins. It's on Wilkins. Yeah, Edwards is uh, playing with four personals, but they found that back door wide open. Here's your third man in the mix, yeah. Andrew Bryant. They never saw that pass. 11 points for Bryant, looking for a dozen at the free throw line. Well, I'm not sure we could have asked for a, for a better game, actually a better double header here. The, uh, the eight point win by Bowling Green earlier might be deceiving because there was technical shot at the end, but this one into overtime and it's a two point game with 2.20 left. Plenty of time for either team to assert itself. Kent State's gonna have to assert itself just to get back to level. Eric Howe. Two man game with Gates. Gates guarded by Bryant. Gates beat him last time. Gates does it again. If he's not going to score, he's going to get fouled. Antonio Gates tripped to the free throw line tonight, oh, seven out of eight. Antonio Gates. Gates with 28 points on the evening. Well, my guess is instead of drawing X's and O's on the sideline, Jim Christian just says, give the ball to, to Gates, and he'll make something happen. That's what Huey Brown used to do with Bernard King. He said, Bernard, where do you want the ball? Yeah. Bernard would show him where he wanted the ball. He said, okay, give it to Bernard over there. Yeah, there's no, you don't need X's. And, you only need one X in that game. 29 points for Gates. Season high. Career high for Gates is 31. Well, I, I'm predicting he's going to get it right here. That's at 30. Time out. 30 points Time out. Antonio Gates. We'll keep it here as we may come into play last year. Jim Christian was a senior at Rhode Island. Al Skinner was an assistant coach. They've taught basketball for hours upon hours. I would imagine that if you ask Jim Christian, what will Skinner try to do in this situation? Jim Christian will get it right one out of three yeah. times. Well, whether they can whether they can stop it is another story, but he certainly knows what's going on in the mind of the other the opposition coach. Two freshmen in the backcourt, Louis Hinnant in the purple and Antonio Gates guarding him. That's Ryan Sidney against a bigger man in John Edwards. Ryan, no. Smith, yeah, no. yes. He'll want an assist. You know, he took that three with 21 seconds left on the shot clock. And I didn't see Al Skinner get upset about it. 28 points for Craig Smith. This ties his season high, also his career high. How? NBA three. Foul! Will he shoot three? Certainly should. 
Yeah, yes, he'll he shoot will. all three. I'll tell you, Hot was so far away from the basket, you should give him four free yeah. throws on that one. All right, curse of the play by play. Now. <laughs> Eric Hout, four out of four on the night from the line. Now, nah, book it, he's got them all. He, he had his miss before he hit the rim. Actually, Eric Hout is six out of six, seven out of seven, 19 points for Eric Hout. Richard Jr. from Lansing. Here we go, two, just relax. We can tie it. And go. See him through? Certainly looks that way. <laughs> Jim Christian calling the defense. We're, we're tempting fate here. No, this is book it. <laughs> well, again, it's, it's almost a miss. He, he touched part of that rim. One short of a career high. 21 points for Eric Howe. All in the second half, right? Yes, sir. Kent State by a point. Second half in overtime. Trying to free somebody on the baseline as they have when they had to. Troy Bell being guarded very closely. Now let's go three or four over there. That's Louis Hinnett. Great rebound, Ryan Sidney put back is good. Strong rebounder is Ryan Sidney. Eight points on the night. One point lead for the Eagles. Inside a minute. Hout wants the ball in Haynes' hand so Hout can run off screen. It will be Gates and Hout running off picks. Haynes has to get the ball to either one. Gets it to Gates. Five second count. Gates travel. Wilkins, big shot! Went, Edwards brought it down. Right. Gates! Well, they got away with one because Edwards should have never put the ball on the floor, but it wound up in the hands of Gates and Kent State with a one-point lead. Career high, Antonio Gates, 32 points in overtime. 23.3 seconds to go. It's a one-point game, 30-second timeout. Somebody's going to win it on the last possession because of the way things are staggered, 84-83. Well, you know what they did, uh, Boston College did last time. They tied up at the end of regulation with uh, less than this amount of time. They went to Bell and went one-on-one -on -one and made a sensational uh, move. There's the miss by Wilkins and the rebound. And there you see the ball slapped away because Edwards should have just gone right up with it. Luckily for Kent State, Gates was there to clean up the garbage and put it in. Tell you, never bring the ball back down if you're a big man. And John Edwards committed a cardinal sin. Yeah. Had it slapped away, but as he has been so often in his Kent State career, Antonio Gates right where he needed to be. 32 points, a career high. Uh, I will ask you the proverbial question, Bill. Would you rather be the team down by one on defense or the team down by one with the bat? Uh, uh, down up by one on defense or down by one with the basketball? I would rather be up by one on defense because you never know. Every coach will tell you that. Every coach will tell you that. A lot of people would say, well, you can draw a foul. You can do all kinds of stuff. Every coach I've ever asked has said the same thing. They want the, the lead without that ball. Antonio Gates, two points away from the shootout record for individual points. Troy Bell, five points away. It's been a two-pronged attack. It's been either Bell or it's been Smith. It's the right and call. The, it's the right call. It happened right in front of us. It hit the chest or the face of Gates. Absolutely the right call, Bill. Gates trying to make it happen. All right. No shot clock. I, I, I'm not sure the referee go. saw the right angle, but he made the right call. 17 and a half seconds to go. Wise use of timeouts by Boston College. They're now out of them. Kent State has two timeouts remaining. Remember, remember at the end of regulate, throw it up right, do it again. Five on the floor for Kent State. Wilkins, John Edwards, DeAndre Haynes, Eric Hout, and of course, that man. Antonio Gates. Eric Hout in the second half has 21 points, one short of his career high. Ryan Sidney will inbound the ball for Boston College. Shot clock is not a factor. Plenty of time, an eternity. Nice help by Anthony Wilkins. Nice help. Anthony Wilkins made it happen. DeAndre Haynes regains composure. And now Kent State needs only to clear the clock. And it'll be Eric Hout to go to the free throw line. You couldn't have asked for a better scenario if you're Kent State. 17 seconds left. They get the steal. And they get the ball into the hands of Eric Hout, who's just about automatic. And it's a one-point lead right now. 
He can make it two, he can make it three. Still plenty of time to come back down and get a three if they need it, however. I will tell you who made that play happen. It was Anthony Wilkins, who was able to measure the man inbounding the ball, Ryan Sidney. Wilkins spaced himself so that Sidney could not get a good look on his inbounds pass, yet he was close enough to bother him, and that allowed Haynes to make the steal. Well, you're right. Haynes will get credited for the steal, but it all happened before that the ball ever came inbounds. 84-83, Howden, who is automatic at the line, will have two shots right here. Boston College had no choice. They just had to follow whoever was wearing a white shirt. It happened to be Hout. Maybe he's got a miss left in him. I don't know. But either way, if they may get a three, they'll have a chance to tie it with a three if Hout does connect on both. Eric Hout at the free throw line. Boston College with no timeouts. Just like the backyard in Lansing. Eric Howe remaining perfect at the free throw line and will certainly, because of the number he has shot tonight, appear in the national leaders when the NCAA comes out with Lansing. He's got all his points since halftime. He has a career high 22 points all in the second half. Matching his shirt number, one more than that would give Kent State a three point lead. What a time for a miss. DeAndre Haynes has it fouled by Ryan Sidney. And now with five seconds to go, DeAndre Haynes will get a chance to put it on ice. Al Skinner can't believe a foul was not called. I'm not sure where he thought it would have been. But Eric Howd, who was just about automatic, picked a heck of a time to finally miss one. But Kent stayed there to clean it up. And Haynes will go to the line. Earlier, the Harlem Globetrotters were here. Marcus Haynes was not part of that group, but this Haynes can put this game away. DeAndre Haynes can put it on ice. You're not going to believe it, but the Globetrotters won that game. How many did Herman Red Clots? <laughs> did they beat the Washington Generals? No, the uh, the Jersey somebody, but Red Clots still had 26. <laughs> the New York Nationals. DeAndre Haynes has four points on the evening. He'll be happy. Oh, my, my, my. Five seconds left to come down and get a three if they need it. He, uh, Haynes could have put this game away by hitting two. Haynes. Three points. Is the lead. Would you foul him earlier than the shot? We'll see. Troy Bell can do it. No go. Kent State wins. So Haynes, who got the big rebound on the miss by Hout, gets one of two. It turned out to be enough. Boston College had no timeouts left to set up a play. They didn't have a bad shot at it, but uh, Kent State comes up with an overtime 86-83 win in the first meeting between these two teams, Boston College and Kent State. Kent State victory snaps a five-game Boston College winning streak. It extends Kent State's streak of victories over Big East teams to four in a row dating back to 1994. Kent State goes to seven and one on the year. Boston College falls to six and three. We will be back to wrap it up from Gundarina and the ended up winning by three in overtime. Here's the way it happened at the end, Les. Well, that was the, uh, the st uh, steal by Haynes, and uh, as they couldn't get the ball in bounds, they finally get it to Howe, who gets fouled, and he will make uh, he, he makes uh, the shot, the first shot there before missing the second one, and uh, he finally misses that one, but somehow the ball comes loose and Haynes winds up with it, and uh, there's another foul out on top. So uh, Kent State shooting 55% in the second half and overtime to come up with that win tonight. Like to thank you very much for joining us here at the Rock and Roll Shootout. On behalf of Les Levine, my name is Bill Needle. Thanks a real lot for watching. We'll talk to you again on down the road on the Kent State Sports Network. Stay tuned for the Wendy's High School Heisman Show with Andy Baskin. And we wish you a very happy new year to you for coming up in 2003.